Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting Cruise Review. Today we're checking out the Carnival Radiance on my four night voyage to Catalina Island and Ensenada, Mexico. Had a great time on board, so let's check out the full experience. I stayed at the Renaissance Long Beach the night before the cruise. You can check out a full tour on my channel and I'll link below. It's awesome because it's actually walking distance to the port. It's about a 30 minute walk. Um, I just had one piece of hand luggage, so it wasn't really a big deal to walk to the port and have a nice little morning stroll. At an early 10.30 a.m. check-in time, I had my COVID test done, which was required uh, three nights before, or excuse me, three days before my cruise. Um, I had all my documents in order. It was nice to walk right by the Queen Mary as well. That does have a hotel in it, but it's still closed from COVID. Uh, but you can do tours before your cruise if you have some time to kill before or after your voyage. And then checking out the cruise terminal now for Carnival. It's an awesome historic building. It's actually where the Spruce Goose, uh, the flying uh, plane that Howard Hughes built, uh, used to be stored. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also some English-themed uh, abandoned buildings uh, right next to the Queen Mary. Um, but here is the entrance over on the side of the cruise terminal and they let us in right at 10.30. There's the Spruce Goose hanging from the rafters there. So I just cleared security. They did another health form check, made sure everything was in order. And then I went and checked in here. Took a few minutes, even though I was one of the first in the door, all the suite passengers get first priority and they had about four or five desks open, but uh, did have to wait a little bit for the ship to be ready to sail. Um, so 11 a.m. they called our boarding groups and we walked up the gangway here and then across the ship. Uh, overall liked this experience more than boarding ships at the Los Angeles port. Just seemed a little bit more organized, a little bit more like you were on a vacation and the sail away was a lot prettier. Now this is my first time sailing Carnival since 1995, believe it or not. I was able to link my previous cruises <laughs> to my account, so I was a Carnival Red member on board. Basically that only got me a free liter and a half water, um, so still have more to go to uh, level up and get some more benefits when I sail. I booked the very cheapest cabin I could find as a single passenger. It's an inside cabin on this voyage, so I'll give you a full tour of that as well. Um, but it took until about 2 p.m. for that to be ready, so I went and explored the ship. And here's my first look at the Carnival Radiance, which is uh, fully redone. It was renamed, and uh, a lot of the ship did feel new. A lot of it um, could see some old bones, um, but this atrium was really pretty, and uh, excited to get going on my voyage. So this cruise was in early May. It was a little chilly on our departure day, a little windy, um, but there was uh, lunch, of course, on offer. I took, took uh, lunch at the Pig and Whistle, which is located on the back of the sun deck. Um, so some decent barbecue, some collard greens, mac and cheese, that sort of thing. Nothing all that special compared to on land, and I am Texan, so I'm a little critical of barbecue, but not too bad. The first thing I do when I get on board a new ship is just explore the whole ship, try and find where I'm going, check out the spa tours, that sort of thing. The casino was closed, so I wanted to get a few shots in there before they opened. Really big casino for a ship. Um, I felt like they had a lot to offer, um, and it was prominently located, um, so you're walking through here often, uh, as many ships uh, have you do. Now, I did not have the beverage package on this voyage, so I was seeking out deals, and I heard that the Red Frog Pub actually had an awesome half-off offer uh, with anything like pitchers or drinks, um, and they actually had that on the port day as well. Um, so that was definitely worth checking out and saved me a bundle. I think a whole pitcher was $11, so a great deal there. Eventually, in the afternoon, as many California cities do, the sun came out, so I definitely checked out some mini golf at the top of the ship here. Uh, really nice mini golf course, looked like it was in excellent shape. Uh, so played a few holes and uh, killed some time before sail away. Didn't really experience any lines for anything on this ship. There was only a thousand people on my sailing. It was midweek, um, but on busier trips, just know that these uh, ropes courses, etc., are all open uh, as soon as you board. So if you want to be first in line and miss some of the crazy lines on sea days, you can do that. And I checked out Guy's Burger for. Um, lunch and it was fantastic one of the best burgers I've had 
lots of options for lunch on the ship though. They have paid options like this seafood shack. So if you want some upscale seafood that is on offer for you as well. By this time I headed down to deck one. I was in the very bottom deck of the ship uh, to check out my cabin. So this is 1427. This is an inside cabin. Uh, it was just me, so I had plenty of room. I felt like the cabin was plenty big. Lots of options here to store luggage and you know, keep things safe in the safe if you're one of those people. Um, life jackets, of course. And then a bigger hanging closet for some of your clothes and then a shorter hanging closet, which also had the mini bar next to it. They had a nice desk over here with, you know, plenty of space to be able to get some work done if you needed to or just store all the papers that you get. Decent sized flat screen TV with uh, lots of options. All of the movies, etc., were actually paid. Uh, been on some cruises where they were free, so just keep that in mind on Carnival. A lot of uh, pay action on, uh, you know, anything that should be an upcharge. And then a nice big spacious uh, bathroom, you know, with uh, everything that you need. A nice little rainfall shower there, which kept uh, everything in there, even with the uh, curtain. So overall, loved my inside cabin. By this time, it was time for sail away. So around 3.30 or so, we got a message on the top deck from some ambassadors of Carnival, including Shaq himself um, and the president of Carnival. Uh, so that was pretty fun. It's uh, Carnival's 50th anniversary this year. So Guy Fieri's up there, everyone, all the celebrity chefs that have uh, options on board. Uh, no Emerald Lagasse restaurant on our ship, but he does have some options on other Carnival ships. So pretty cool there. And then a fun dance party for everyone led by the cruise director, Dion. So a lot of fun for everyone, I'm doing some electric slides, etc. So now we're doing the electric slide and we are sailing away to Catalina Island. It's only a few miles offshore, so we do just sail in the middle of the ocean doing laps and uh, enable the ship to open the casinos. I had an early dinner in the main dining room. I felt like the food in the main dining room was excellent. It was a lot better than anything that I had on Princess for sure, a nice big steak. Uh, on offer every single night. Uh, flavor was there, a little tough, but uh, overall pretty happy. And all of the Mai Tai dining is done at the back of the ship's dining room, the Sunset Restaurant. Uh, everything felt really nice and new in here, so that was really nice. Um, and the uh, has nice views of the ship's wake, which I love. Um, just be careful. There are some window seats that just have uh, windows blocked out, which I didn't find all that great. So I'd ask for different tables sometimes. Love the skylight in the atrium. Constantly walking through this. There's a lot of dead ends on this ship, I would say. Uh, they do pack a lot in, which is nice, but sometimes it's a little frustrating. You have to go up a deck to go, you know, on the same deck that you're already on, etc. cetera. Um, but, Plenty of entertainment on board. I checked out the welcome show here in the Liquid Lounge. It's a two-story venue. Um, they also have the you know, fun ashore show. Just gives you good information if you've never been on a cruise. Um, and we just were enjoying our time at sea. So I did enjoy a lot of the comedy on board the ship. I thought it was one of the funnier comedians on board compared to other cruise ships. Um, you know, cruise ship comedians usually not all that great, but felt like this was a lot of fun and they had a ton of shows throughout the voyage, all different. So. Definitely kudos to Carnival there. And then the next morning we arrived in Catalina Island. So this is a tender port, so you do have to hop on a tender and get to shore. I was on the first one of the day because you do have to get uh, tickets for later in the morning and the lines did appear to get kind of long. So if you're coming ashore, I recommend uh, eating an early breakfast and getting on one, the first ship or two uh, back to Catalina Island and you won't have any problems and you'll have, you know, the whole day ashore. I didn't spend too much time on shore, um, but I did manage to play a round of golf at the Catalina Country Club. It's nine holes, a little expensive for nine holes, but you can rent clubs there. You don't have to bring them on the ship. Uh, super fun time, uh, good way to get some exercise and walk around and see some of the island. Uh, of course, there's plenty of other tours like 
nature tours, there's hiking, uh, and then there's a ton of fun bars on shore as well. So a great port really is a step back in time into the 1940s and uh, had a lot of fun. So I was back on board in time for happy hour at the Red Frog Pub. Uh, I love Carnival's custom brews. Uh, they had a great 50th anniversary birthday ale. Uh, really loved that one. So always fun to try different beers. Uh, and, you know, I'm a sucker for a specialty beer that you can't technically get anywhere else. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then uh, some fun uh, whale watching and uh, dolphin watching as we departed Catalina Island. Uh, for our next port, which was Ensenada, Mexico. Since there was so much going on at night, I definitely ate dinner a little earlier on this ship than I normally do. Probably ate around 5.30 each day. Also just get kind of cut down on lines, etc. All of the uh, tables in the My Time Dining you do via the app. So you check in uh, and then they have a table ready for you and you say that you're at the restaurant and then they find you a table. It's really, really organized. Best probably I've seen from any of the cruises I've taken this year and a good way to manage crowds. So tonight, ate at the Sunset Restaurant again. Great views as we sailed away. Some delicious bread on offer. And then a nice mushroom soup, which is just one of my favorite items ever. And I feel like I always have it on cruise ships. Uh, the fried oysters, not really my favorite thing. Prefer the raw oysters. Had some nice shrimp as well. All really high quality stuff. Um, so happy there. And then the prime rib was on offer tonight. This was sort of their dress formal night, but it wasn't really a true formal night. So just keep that in mind. If you do like to dress up, they do have that on offer. At this point, I found the Alchemy Bar, which has awesome cocktails. Definitely recommend that. That was probably my favorite spot on the ship. And then late night after some more entertainment, I checked out some sushi. So $2 a piece for Toro. Uh, I was very happy with that. Happy to pay the, the money and to get, um, you know, some nicer food on board for a great price and also includes edamame which is always nice so all that was six bucks uh, which is not too bad considering the quality also a nice pizza restaurant at the back of the ship i got a nice prosciutto pizza really good pizza so definitely check that out the lines do get long late night because it is one of the only restaurants that stays open um, the next morning i woke up and they had put towel animals on every single chair out in the pool which is really cool um, and we were in not so sunny in Sonata, Mexico, but did uh, end up getting offshore, had a nice Mexican breakfast burrito to start the day, um, and I was heading to La Bufadora. Uh, good thing to know here is that Uber is available, so you could save a little bit of money if you didn't do a dedicated tour to La Bufadora. Um, honestly, if I did this again, I'd probably just do an organized tour. It was a little bit of a hassle getting back from La Bufadora with uh, taxis. Um, if you're just a single traveler, you know, if you have a family, it might be a little cheaper uh, doing your own. Uh, but uh, the port itself is a little industrial, um, but you can walk right into downtown from the port. They do have $4 round trip shuttles uh, that take you into downtown. It's not really worth it unless you have mobility issues, so uh, don't feel the need to do that. They kind of make you think like, oh, you have to take that to get in, but you really just can walk off the ship and walk all the way over there. So I made it to La Bufadora. It's about a 45 minute cab ride or bus ride out to it. 
Uh, just keep in mind that uh, it's kind of on a you know nature's timeline here, so you have to wait around a little bit to uh, see if the uh, big water explosions happen. I stayed here for about 30 minutes and watched. It was really a lot of fun and saw some some good action from uh, Mother Nature here. One of the worst things about La Bufador, though, is getting to the actual site that you came to see because it's about three or four blocks worth of souvenir stalls and they're pretty pushy. Um, so not my favorite aspect of it, but if you're into shopping, there you go. Um, La Guararense Cartera is this little ceviche stand in downtown. Anthony Bourdain loved it. It is amazing and worth the trip alone. Uh, but here's the nice little downtown area. You can walk around. There's plenty of bars and shopping. Uh, Cantina Hussongs is technically where the margarita was invented. It's a cool, you know, feel like feels like in an 1800s bar. Um, funny enough, I was in Las Vegas and they have a licensed uh, place at the Mandalay Bay um, called Cantina Hussongs as well. So had a nice little day ashore and then went back to the ship to enjoy more time on the Carnival Radiance. As you can see, much like many coastal cities, Ensenada definitely sunnied up in the afternoons. That was great. Fun to do some water slides uh, while people were ashore as well. Um, checked out some of the tacos. They have an awesome tortilla maker right there, so fresh tortillas. Um, and then I played some trivia over in the atrium. So they have trivia at different um, places on board, um, but I liked it in the atrium because it gets some nice sunlight. And then we sailed away, and at Sailway I ran over to main dining room again had some delicious chicken uh, so yeah really happy with everything in the main dining room of my whole trip if you want a full tour of the carnival radiance I have that video on my channel appreciate the likes uh, if you like cruise content or resort content subscribe to my channel just a quick plug there thanks a lot so on my sea day the next day before we arrived back in Long Beach I played a lot of trivia and then I did the martini uh, tasting. So a cool cocktail class and uh, the bartenders at Alchemy are just amazing. So uh, really a lot of fun there. Um, they were even making some cocktails that required a little bit of fire, which was cool. So don't miss out on that if you're getting on the Carnival Radiance and you like a good cocktail. But before you know it, we were back unfortunately in Long Beach and had to depart. Very easy deep uh, barkation process, so thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned.